If you, what's somebody in yellow? Their kind of dream job. So what's what's your dream job? Do you know what your dream job is? No. Okay. Does somebody else have a like a dream job or something that they would want, always wanted to have or own or be? I know it's a big thing. Oh, that's okay. Art student. Art student. Perfect. Okay. Arts studio. So how am I going to help you own your own art studio? Yeah. Um, so the thing is, if you're starting from here and you say, I want to own my own art studio, it could be, I want to lose five pounds. It could be, I want to be on TV in four months. It could be anything along those lines. It really could be anything. That's why the goal setting has no kind of boundaries that way. So if you have a starting point like this and you have a finish point, art studio. You have to think about all these things, all, all these different aspects here, have to be all the things you need to do to create an art studio. So like, like let's let's work on this together. Uh, what, what was your name? Angelica. Angelica. So let's help Angelica all with her art studio. So name something that would be involved with an art studio. So I'm going to start you off. Location. Location. So, cool. What, uh, what else? What else do you Price. think? What's that? Cost. Cost. So I guess like you can do cost of you know, uh, supplies, let's say. Let's go with kind of like the physical aspects that you need. Um, anybody else? You in the back? Can you, can you see? Yeah. What, uh, what, what do you think? Uh, um, clients, I guess. Clients, right? Very side. It could be, let's say paint. Let's say paint. You know, so you have, and then you, because you want to like, make money, you want to go with a business license. So this is kind of the heavy stuff. Um, so you have all these different things. You have all these different aspects. And there's, there could be like, like tons more, it could be just that, depending on what the goal is. So if you wanted to come up with these things, you have to find a person that can help you with each of them. So whatever the goal is, whether it's to be a real estate agent or, or own a commercial building or lose 10 pounds or something like that, you have to have somebody that can help you with each of them. Because if you don't, and if you try to figure out, it'll, it could take you 10 times longer. It could take you twice as long. It could take you the same time, depending on your expertise and how much you need to learn. So if you have a location here, and you needed a location for your stuff, maybe there's somebody who has an art studio already. right? Maybe there's somebody who's willing to share the space. So if you have somebody here that says, I want to share the space with you, how can I do that? Just like literally email them and say, I know you have an art studio. I want an art studio. How can I do that? How did you start here? How did you, you know, how can I go about doing that? Like, and there might be, the thing is, if, it's, if somebody has made an art studio before, um, they'll tell you because that's the pathway that they got there. And you're kind of flattering them by finding out more about them. So for example, um, let's say cost, cost and supply. This is where you kind of have to get a little bit creative. You might have to barter your services with their services. So one of the things that I've learned oh, with uh, uh, Luxury Magazine um, is there's one time where I actually stayed at the Royal York Hotel for free. Everyone's like, well that costs a couple hundred bucks. Yes but I bartered my services, my expertise, for their services and their expertise. So in this case, my expertise was media and writing a, a blog post and promoting them, which everyone wants. Everyone wants media about them. And I exchanged it for a room in theirs. And if you think about it, a lot of hotels have empty rooms every night. So if I was to barter my services with their services, it's an equal trade, if you think about it. Because I have a story that I have to write, one, 
and they have a room that I could stay in for free, but then they get media out of it. One, so it's a one for one thing. So I've learned this, and so you can have a, whatever kind of lifestyle you want if you kind of barter the services. So let's say you're really good at hairstyling, and you have, I need to do a cost, and now, like I need to figure out the cost. So somebody says, I have a lot of supplies, and you say, well, the price is a little bit too high. And you say, I'll, I'll cut everybody's hair, or I'll style everybody's hair every month if you bring the cost down, or if you, if you do this for me. And that's a one-to-one -one thing, and that way you're using your expertise to find, um, to lower and make your dreams kind of more rea reality. And so you can do this with any, any, anything. And what's great about people like this in this class is that, let's say, does anyone know anybody who, let's, let's be really specific, does anyone know who, anyone who owns an art studio? Boom. So that could be one person. In Newfoundland. In Newfoundland. Well, <laughs> you better. <laughs> they need that too. <laughs> so you could talk to you know Michael and say, hey, can I get the contact information for this person who has an art studio? I want to find out what they, they can do. So Steve, if um, she doesn't know anybody, what about social, using social media to get the word out? Using social media is, is perfect because um, if you think about it and play it from your shoes and your eyes, if somebody asks you for coffee and say, I really love what you're doing, I really want to get to know you more in this aspect and I want to ask you some questions because I'm really interested in starting my own thing. I don't think a lot of people are going to say no unless you're too busy, in which you have to reschedule and stuff like that. But um, that way you can easily, you say if you were ch chatting with somebody in Iceland and they have an art studio, you say, how did you get started? How did you get this? And you can ask them on social media and then say if the answers are too long, Take it through email. Take it through LinkedIn. Have all these different, like use all your different connections to say, I want to, I want to start this. I want to use, uh, I want to, I want to do big things with this. And I think you can help. And so whether it's like location, cost, clients, clients you can use to find social media because uh, one of the things that I use that's free is called, uh, I'll get it right down, is called search. <coughs> Search.twitter.com. Has anyone ever used it? No, we haven't talked about Twitter yet. Okay. Okay. Who's on? Who's? Is everyone on Twitter right now? No. Put up your hand if you're on Twitter. I have no idea what Twitter is, but well, I'm. On Twitter. Yeah, I'm not using it. <laughs> cool. Oh, yeah. Um. So with Twitter, Twitter's the most. Like, is everyone? Who's on? Who's on Facebook? Put up your hand. Everybody. Okay. Everyone's on Facebook. Cool. So think about Twitter. As, so Facebook is cool because you can chat with your friends, you can chat with people that you already know. You can message people that you already know and, and connect with them. And if you don't know them, then you can have them as a friend and then now you know them. With Twitter, Twitter is interesting because it breaks down those walls so you can talk to anybody else who's on Twitter. So it doesn't matter if it's a store owner in Boston or if it's your neighbor and like or somebody's a train operator in Toronto if they're on Twitter you can you can send them a message and it, depending on how good they are on Twitter if they get back to you then you can start a conversation with them and you can't do that on Facebook like for example I went off Facebook for two months last year because for fun I just thought I don't want to be on Facebook right now I don't really know what it's for I'm not using it properly so I went on Twitter and I had a much better time on Twitter because I got to talk to everybody from all these different natures, all these different businesses, all these different places. And I actually ended up liking it more than I do uh, on Facebook. So I'll go off Facebook any time if I want, but I won't go off Twitter because I can talk to the whole world. I've had people who are comedians and stuff like that that I've talked to. I've talked to somebody from The Young and the Restless, <laughs> who knew? And so that kind of opens the doors to all these different people. And if you can't do that for Facebook, you can't reach out to somebody random, you can, unless they're basically your friend or you send them an email, but everyone gets creeped out, screenshots it, posts on their wall. Um, so when it comes to connecting with these people, 
if you use, let's say, search.twitter.com, and you go into it, like, let's say, advanced search, you can basically take any, any keyword. So let's say it's um, art studio or arts. So let's say hashtag arts. You can use it, and then you can say specify in Toronto. So you can specify arts in Toronto. Who's talking to arts in Toronto? And there could be somebody talking who owns a magazine who does that. So it could be somebody who is a painter, somebody who does it full time, part time, or it could be an art studio owner, right? And so you can see who you, who are like the experts and the people who own like the stores and stuff like that, store owners, and like and contact them. And if you get a if you get a response, that's great. Now you just start a conversation with an art owner. Uh, or an art store owner, or if you if you don't, just keep trying. Talk about something different. <coughs> Send them the same message. Talk about so if somebody says, posts like this is really interesting. Show some interest in that. Ask some questions about that. Treat it treat it like if you were on the receiving end of all these questions and stuff like that. If you put a blog post out about let's say arts or developing your own art studio and somebody said, I'm really interested in that, then you're gonna love that. You're gonna love the, like, the attention that you're getting. And what's interesting about Twitter is everyone's a, basically a narcissist. So everyone likes to talk about themselves. Everyone likes to talk about themselves. They all like to hear about themselves and stuff like that. So if you have everybody talking to them uh, about themselves, and if you show interest in that, then all of a sudden they're gonna show interest in you. So if you like, Talk to them like, oh, I had a great salad today. <laughs> I went to, I went for a great bike ride, and then you say, oh, great. What? Where did you go on your bike ride? They're like, oh my god, they're interested in my bike ride. <laughs> <laughs> it's same goes. That's like the lowest so you can go, but the same goes for everything. So if they were in a band and they're like, check out my latest album. It's pretty cool. And you check out their latest album and you think it's pretty cool, you can let them know. And they're like, hey man, it was pretty cool. Let's say that. That's rad. <laughs> Come backstage at our next show. So there's different ways that you can you can take social media. You can take it people a lot of people don't use it because they don't know what to use it for. And when it comes to that, I always say if you know about your interests, like let's say hairstyling or let's say cool designs on glasses, or right, if you're into glasses. Or somebody, name uh, another hobby, I guess you could say. So, you, who came in? Uh, hat. Hat apple juice. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> apple juice. A hobby? What's, uh, what's one of your interests? Hockey. Hockey, perfect. So, if you are a hockey fanatic, there's tons of people to talk to. There's tons of fans, there's tons of team owners, there's tons of players that you can talk to. You can talk to, you can keep track of people who are up and coming. And if you're wanting to get into that industry, maybe there's an opportunity there. And say, because uh, I've had it where I've come up with ideas. Like, I have an idea for food bloggers, because I don't really like food bloggers. Because what they do is they go into a restaurant, and I know some people who just write negative reviews no matter what and they, they nitpick at something. So I was thinking out of having an event called Put Your Food Where Your Mouth Is and having it where food bloggers cook for other food bloggers. And if I invited people out, that's challenging, that's interesting. So I'm being interested towards them, so they'll probably be interesting back at me. So if you kind of, if you get interested in different hobbies and you, you, you express your hobbies online and say, I'm a hockey, jeweler who likes scuba diving, then that's an interesting person right there. This is a lot of conversation points. You guys, I just joined a couple people, but <laughs> that's okay. Uh, so, and I know a lot of people who, who express their interest on their Twitter bio or something. So people, if you're tweeting about that, you'll, if you tweet about the same thing enough, you'll get readers that are interested in that too. Then you can start conversations with that. So. When it comes to um, basically using social media to, I was kind of going as a mix of the two, 
But if you kind of have a goal with your, uh, with your social media presence where you say, I want to be, like for me, I want to be uh, this one person who's in Hamilton. He's my benchmark. I'm out for him. He's uh, this guy named Chris Farias, and he has this company called KiteString. And he has this, uh, I, don't, I think he's like 11,000 followers or something. And so when I was starting, I'm like, I want to be him. I want to be him, and I want to get more followers, and I'll make it competitive. And I always have a benchmark somewhere. So whether it's a brand of mine or whether it's me, I always have some per person that's like, oh, they tweeted today. I got to tweet twice. And you kind of like, <laughs> Like, you kind of pick your battles, and they don't even know. They're kind of walking around and eating parfaits and stuff like that, saying, yeah, this, I'm having a normal day. And then there's somebody who's kind of like pinpointing them, like, I want two parfaits. <laughs> I feel sick. I want a cronut. Anyway, so, so that's what that's what you can do. You can, you can, you know, if you... If you share like what your dream is, so say my dream, like if you put on your Twitter feed, my dream is to, um, my dream is to fly. <laughs> Somebody's gonna be like, hey, I'm a pilot, I'll take you out. <laughs> um, and so if you kind of establish that you wanna um, like own an art studio or whatever, you can post it up and you can ask people who are doing the same thing and they'll probably help you because collaboration is, Every, every single time beats competition. Every single time. And if somebody can help you and be, they'll feel good about it. It's like a charity thing. So if I, like, I started my businesses, so that's why I want to reach out to you guys so you can help start your businesses. And I feel good about it. I'm not, like, I don't want to charge anything. I'm not going to get, you're not going to get an invoice in the mail or something like that. I just, I do it because I want to give back. And a lot of people are the same way. So if they start, the art studio and they, they realize that there's a whole bunch of hard times and struggles that they can kind of pass through and just by their showing their expertise then they can actually you know give it to you and you can thrive so which leading me to my final point um, creating opportunities and you guys are graduating what five weeks five weeks less than what less than five weeks okay so does anyone have a plan for that, for when you graduate? Have you thought about like where you want to work after you, uh, after you're graduating? Put your hand. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. I'm about it a bit, yeah. Cool. Uh, do you have a plan with that? Do you guys have a plan? I'm How are you going to attack them? Starting my business. There you go. So he's starting a business right out the gate. That's mm -hmm. great. Congratulations. Um, a lot of people who are look, looking at the opportunities like uh, getting a job or creating an opportunity, um, don't really go until after they start, like finish school completely, and then that's the five weeks of you know that you didn't work on it, right? So if if I know you guys are busy, I, I've heard like their schedules are pretty pretty crazy and stuff like that. I've heard I've heard the news. Um, so if you if you do, I like to do if I want to get into something new. Like I never. Disclaimer, I never actually started a magazine before. Like, I never even wrote for a magazine before. And I started a magazine. So, and I went to, I was in engineering, and I went to social media. That, these are things that I just started because I, I thought I'd be cool at them. I thought I'd be good at them. And I had a passion for it. But they were completely opposite of what I actually wanted to do. So each and every day, if, uh, in the morning, uh, I did like a 15, 15, 15 roll, where in the morning, afternoon, and night, man, I don't know why, but uh, <laughs> evening, <laughs> it's May. Um, morning, afternoon, evening, or dusk, day. Um, 15 minutes in the morning, I was, I was reading about my industry. I was reading about whether if it was social media, or if it was luxury, or if it was a magazine, or whether it's like photography, anything I can do to like better myself and keep improving, on I would do it 15 minutes a day. So maybe this one was social media, maybe this one was luxury, maybe this one was magazine writing, maybe this one was uh, how to be a scuba diver, this maybe this one was how to be a hairstylist, how to buy cool things online. Um, 
So it could be anything. And if you do 15 minutes a day, then, and you do it 